A lot of us grew up hearing firsthand stories from our grandparents about life in the country before electricity and plumbing. Well, there's a whole generation that's lost connection with that. And the Ellington Agriculture Center in Nashville wants to do something about it. Here's Tammy Arinder who takes us on a tour. Hit it real good and hard. Trying to start a fire with a flint <laughs> and a stone, just the way our forefathers did. Thank if we were depending on this to cook our meals, many of us would have starved. It's such a valuable lesson for these third graders from University School of Nashville, learning how our early settlers survived on this land 200 years ago, back before electricity and before high-tech factories and sewing machines. If you twist it like this, that makes it a lot stronger because those fibers in there are getting twisted. And before computers and ink pens. In the ink. Now what would they make ink from? Berries. Berries maybe. Maybe the soot from the fireplace. These young minds soak up the information from Sally Swore as she describes the tough road the pioneers had to travel, realizing this covered wagon was the SUV of the day, and entire families would pile up in these wooden wheeled apparatuses and travel across country looking for prime farmland. Museum director Ann Dale says that she loves to watch the kids' faces when they learn about how their great-grandfathers settled the land. People moved to Tennessee in a covered wagon 200 years ago. The Pioneer families moved in this way. And this morning, the children were involved in one of the hands-on activity programs, uh, covered wagons and log cabins on the Cumberland. This is just one of many educational programs offered by the Ellington Agricultural Center staff. It's a living history lesson for children like Elise Blackbird. Basically, how Pioneers lived and um, what they took and um, how hard it was on their journey from North Carolina over the Appalachian, uh, over some mountains to here. The focus in this museum, of course, is agriculture. And uh, we want everyone that comes in here to realize how important farm families are in our state today as well as in the past. The museum is comprised of some 4,000 artifacts, each one shedding light on this vanishing era. These precious pieces of our state's rural history are housed in this early 19th century plantation barn. It's wall to wall with agricultural collectibles. Take a look at this McCormick Reaper. Weed farmers today can hardly imagine having to harvest hundreds of acres with this piece of machinery. But in the mid-1800s, this revolutionized farming. The McCormick Reaper, you are cutting your wheat. That was a huge advancement um, in the 1830s when Cyrus McCormick came up with that invention. Or what about this jumbo steam engine? Built in 1895, it had 14 horsepower, weighing in at 13,400 pounds. It powered a sawmill, a grist mill, and a threshing machine in Crockett Mills, Tennessee. This is the only steam traction engine of this year and model in running condition in the U.S. Or for those who've never made their way to a Tennessee farm, you can actually touch and feel some white gold cotton. It's a chance for kids to learn just how they get the clothes on their back. That dress that's growing out in the field right now, it's going to be on their back, you know, next year. So we just want them to appreciate a little bit more about what farm families are doing in our state. And it's just so much fun to see their eyes light up. The Ag Center isn't just indoors, it's outdoors as well. As you can see from this garden, it's called an heirloom garden where they grow vegetables that have been handed down from generation to generation like brandywine tomatoes or bullnose peppers. And they also grow cotton. And you can see the cotton in every stage of its growth. And just like spinning on the spinning wheel, boys and girls both would learn to use these tools when they were very, very young. The log cabins also offer some hands-on history lessons, from churning butter or sweeping with brooms made of corn shucks to ironing. Kids seem to be excited to clean at the log cabins. Now if mom could just get them to do this at home. <laughs> they also shucked and shelled some corn. Matthew Jacobs knew this corn was too hard for him to eat. We were um, making um, food for the animals and 
see ton of seeds so, we, so the animals don't starve. Also outdoors at the Ag Museum each fall is the Music and Molasses Festival. It's a celebration of the harvest time. Each October the grounds look like a page plucked from a history book with blacksmithing, thread made at a spinning wheel, and of course food like good old country ham and molasses. Whether it's music and molasses or just a trip around the museum's tool department, you can't help but realize our forefathers had a tough row to hoe. Despite its challenges, they did, and this museum helps us understand just how hard they worked. We have a very active farm community in Tennessee, so we hope that they will look at the items in here and see how things have progressed through the years, but still appreciate the heritage that we have in our rural community. So whether you come from a farm family or not, you can appreciate this way of life, because if you eat or wear clothes, you need to thank a farmer.